Lead Rock Third Party. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. A few weeks ago, I asked the Minister of Health if we had any information about long-haul COVID rates in British Columbia, and if so, where the data was being posted for the public. The Minister said information about infections and recoveries is shared daily, but subsequent follow-up with Dr. Henry and the BC CDC by the press has clarified that we currently have no idea what proportion of patients continue to experience symptoms months after being diagnosed. Other jurisdictions who are tracking and reporting this data have found that at least 10%, if not closer to 30% of COVID patients end up developing chronic symptoms. With a rolling average of over 500 and last week rising, British Columbians testing positive every day, this is a huge blind spot. We could end up with tens of thousands of people needing long-term support. My question through you, Honourable Speaker, is to the Minister of Health. It is not accurate to classify people as recovered if the virus has caused them to experience chronic physical or neurological symptoms. When specifically can British Columbians expect government to start reporting on rates of long-haul COVID and what policy work is being done to ensure people with long COVID will get the supports they need? Minister of Health. Honourable Speaker, every case in British Columbia is important. Every case is followed and support is provided. We've, we've put in place a number of clinics across British Columbia for people uh, dealing with continuing conditions of COVID-19. When we refer to people as being, uh, of having their condition resolved, what we mean is that they're no longer infectious. This has been repeated again and again and again and again by Dr. Henry and myself. That is the meaning of that term when we use that term uh, recovered. But I would say to people that COVID-19 is a vicious virus. It doesn't argue with us. It can have profound effects, whether you're 25 or 85. We know who has the most severe effects. That's often people with other medical conditions and our elders. But we know that the ongoing effect of this virus is can be profound. We also know that the virus has only been around for a little more than a year. And so we continue to work with and study extensively. And the number of studies that's produced every day on the subject and the work done in British Columbia is, is comprehensive. So I would say to the member that uh, I'm gonna continue, as I said in the answer to the previous question, to rely on our public health officials to, uh, to ensure that information is available, particularly for people at this time, at this time of high vulnerability of COVID-19, so that everyone understands the potential impact of this virus and everyone takes every step to ensure that uh, every step is made to ensure that this virus is not transmitted. Lead of the third party on supplemental. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. And the, the Health Minister identifies that people are being uh, classified as recovered if they're no longer infectious. I think there are a lot of people in British Columbia who feel that their ongoing struggle with symptoms uh, and them being lumped in as recovered is not actually capturing the experience that they're having. And they're wondering about what kind of supports they will get from a government that isn't acknowledging them in the data and the reporting. As we know, COVID long-haul patients report a wide variety of symptoms from pain to brain fog uh, to memory problems and insomnia, heart problems. And data from other countries that are tracking long COVID indicates that it affects more women than men. The minister speaks about being as mindful as possible. And we saw last week with case numbers rising and variants of concern spreading, there appears to be growing risk with students going back to classrooms next week and teachers not receiving vaccinations until April, and with a few weeks after that before immunity is conferred for teachers, it's hard not to be concerned about the prospect of teachers making it to this point in the pandemic, only to be faced with the potential for the infection and long COVID. My question is to the Minister of Health. What adjustments is government considering in light of the rising case numbers and the continued call from teachers to implement a comprehensive mask mandate, better distancing in classrooms, and better ventilation. Minister of Health. Uh, Honourable Speaker, uh, I would say to be very clear to the member, and I, we have been again and again and again on this subject, that we, when we refer to people having discontinued isolation, it doesn't mean that the effects of COVID-19 
are over on a person, particularly the people who are dealing with other medical conditions. Uh, this has been said from the beginning to suggest, and to suggest in any ways, the member just did, that that means that we are not concerned about it. It's just wrong to, cons to say that public health officials or medical health officers aren't concerned about it because we provide this information is just incorrect. And I just wanted to put that clear, clearly and on the record. This is the mo one of the most challenging times we face in our COVID-19 pandemic. We have an immunization campaign that I think is delivering in an effective way across the province based on the known vaccine we have. As of today, for example, in the Pfizer vaccine, 440,000 uh, doses have been delivered to health authorities, 426,000 of them have been put in people's arms. That's extraordinarily effective. In our vaccination strategy, we laid out in detail for the honorable member last week. And we are gonna continue to take steps public health steps to ensure that people are safe and as safe as safe as possible around British Columbia. And I would like to say to everybody in British Columbia, now is the time when we need to continue to follow public health orders and public health guidance in every workplace, including schools. We need to follow robust public health plans and COVID-19 safety plans in every workplace. It's more important now than ever as we see hope on the horizon to ensure people are protected in a time of high transmission for COVID-19. And the provincial health officer and the Ministry of Health are gonna to continue to deliver on that agenda. And I, th I am Thank thankful you. to all British Columbians who are following that guidance to this day and beyond. Thank you.